Hi everyone! Welcome to Workstation Wednesdays. My name is Tracy King. I'm the Bulletin Board Lady. Um, you might find me on my blog at mrskingrocks.blogspot.com. Um, you can find me on Twitter as Tracy King, and you can find me on Instagram as the Bulletin Board Lady. Um, I'm going to talk to you tonight about some of my favorite workstations for fall, but before I jump into that, I thought I would ask her, ask, answer a couple of questions that I've got in um, private messages or a few questions that have been the same question that's been asked several times about what I'm doing on Wednesdays and um, a little bit about me. So um, I am in my 24th year of teaching. Um, that was a question that was like, oh my gosh, how long have you been teaching? Now you know, retirement is in sight, but um, I don't know. I don't know if I'll retire when it's time or not. I really, really love what I do. Um, another question that I got was, are you sitting in your living room floor? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> That's the couch behind me and the window and the plant growing in. And I'm sitting at my coffee table for most of the workstation Wednesdays because I'm just at home relaxing and talking to some friends. Um... Another question, which I guess I really need to like get specific on this one, was is it Workstation Wednesday or Workstation Wednesdays? Yes. <laughs> and if you are doing something and you want me to pay attention to that has hashtag, I would do both of those because, um, I don't know, I think I'm using Wednesday and Wednesdays interchangeably. And um, the last question that I've been asked a few times in the last month was, um, what? You have a son? Why don't we ever see pictures of him on social media? Yes, I do have a son, a very handsome 20-year-old son. And, oh, six or seven years ago, we agreed that I wouldn't post much. I mean, I'm a mom. I got to post some much about him on social media and I definitely wouldn't tag him or anything like that. So yes, I do have a son. His name is Joey and he's 20 and I have a daughter who is eight. Yes, that's a long ways apart. So I'm going to have someone in school forever basically. And um, her name is Sophie. She just got her tonsils and adenoids taken out um, earlier this week. So she's in here in the room. So if you hear any bumping or singing or giggling or anything, that's probably her. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and jump into the topic for tonight. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite workstations for fall. So there are things that would work good in, um, well, in Missouri, they would work well in October and November. Might be a little bit different um, where you are, but I'm really mostly going to focus on um, stations that I use in October. So some that have to do with Halloween and some that are almost Halloween-y um, to to inspire you maybe to get those stations ready and um, use them in your rotations in October. So um, I've written a few blog posts about things to do in October and things to do for fall. I've linked them up at the link that's um, in the description for this video so you can check those out after um, the Facebook Live. And there are a few other resources there too that you might be interested in checking out. And one of those that I'm not really gonna spend a lot of time on tonight is called Jazzy Jack-O-Lanterns. And um, I have a bulletin board that kind of like sets the stage for this. And I usually put it up in like a corner or on a cabinet or something so that I can use it as a workstation rotation. And all of the Jack-O-Lanterns, their eyes and nose and their hair and their mouth is all made from um, music symbols, whether they're um, made larger or they're multiples or they're turned upside down. And um, students have to then like figure out, okay, how many symbols are in here and what are the names of the symbols? And then I give them a blank pumpkin and they can draw their own jazzy jack-o'-lantern using only music symbols like, you know, fermata eyes and a treble clef mouth or whatever. Um, they can only use music symbols to create their jack-o'-lanterns and it's really really cool to cut them all out and create a huge musical pumpkin patch. Um, for me this usually um, happens around parent-teacher conference time so it's really kind of a cool display to have out in the hallway. Um, that's not one that I'm really going to dive much into because I pretty much just explained it there but it is one that I try to do at least every other 
year. Um, I teach three grades right now, so I want to kind of mix it up so that we're not doing the exact same fall workstations every year. So that one was Jazzy Jack-O-Lanterns. I find that when it starts getting darker earlier and it's cooler outside, that it's kind of a fun time to talk about dy dynamics. Um, I never feel like I really do enough with dynamics. We talk about it when it comes up in music and I always have a reference up in my room for it, but I never really just hit it hard like, now we're going to memorize all of the dynamic symbols and terms. And I don't, I don't really do that. We don't take a full quiz over that or anything. So in the last few years, I've been looking for ways to incorporate learning um, the dynamic symbols and, and meanings um, in workstations because I really, really, really love workstations. So um, if I were teaching this lesson, now I use this with fourth grade, but I've done this in different schools with third, fourth, and fifth, and really I think it could be done probably with second grade as well. Um, we start our dynamics unit, which is only like two weeks, but whatever. Um, we start our dynamics unit by listening to Forte Piano, which is by Teresa Jennings. It's published um, through Music K8 Magazine. There is a really cool video um, that goes with this song that you can find on YouTube, and I've linked it up with a list of um, resources up above. So my kids will watch that and will say, okay, just guessing, what do you think Forte means? What do you think Piano means? What do you think Crescendo means? And, um... And we, we kind of jumpstart the lesson that way. So then we'll, I'll walk them through the chart that I have on my wall because that's one of the decor items that I like to keep up all year long. And I'll say, you know, we'll go through each of the symbols and everybody always giggles on PP. Um, and then we'll do my favorite dynamic activity, which is the spooky dynamics poem. Now, this is not my poem. I wish that I was this smart, but it is not my poem. It's a poem by, um, let me find her name. I can't because it's gone. Okay, I put it in my notes though. Um, and this was submitted to Music K8 Magazine. It's in volume 18, number one. And I took this poem because I thought it was just genius. And I put it into a PowerPoint so that um, my kids could perform it with me. So it's uh, the lines of the poem each have a dynamic marking in front of them and the class reads it together. And we're going to do that um, tonight too. So I'm going to get you real close to me. Hello. And turn you around. There's sick Sophie. Poor girl. All right. Spooky Dynamics Poem. Now, I don't have permission to um, share this PowerPoint, but if you um, are an MK8 subscriber, you probably already have this issue. And um, if not, you can buy, sorry, I am still here. Woo, hello. There you are. Um, I still, um, I can share this part with you, but if you can just buy the individual um, copy of the magazine to get a full copy of this. And that's a great issue, so it's well worth it. So, Spooky Dynamic Poems. So, what you'll notice is that um, up in the left-hand corner, you're going to see a dynamic marking. And that's the way we're going to use our voice as we read what's on the slide. So, it's okay. People around you are not looking. You can go ahead and read this with me. It's dark in my room. It's so late at night. I'm trying to sleep. Sleep is nowhere in sight. I keep hearing noises, scary, frightful sounds. Thunder crashes, wind howls, rain is falling down. Something is coming, coming up the stairs. Maybe it's a robber. Oh no, beware. Maybe it's a monster with big, ghouly eyes. Big, hairy, ugly, a horrid surprise. Maybe it's a goblin or a huge, hungry bear. Oh, what do I do? It's at the top of the stairs. Closer and closer, it's coming in my room. It's giving me shivers, my impending gloom. It's opening the door. It's coming inside. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, Mother. What a pleasant surprise. 
And the kids all kind of laughed because they were kind of, you know, freaking themselves out a little bit with, oh my gosh, what could it be? Who is it? Oh my gosh. And so they always want to do it a second time. And they should now that, you know, they know what's going to happen. And so we would go through the poem again. Some days we would just stop there and pick up with this dynamic lesson um, the next week. But other days, you know, I've tried it just moving straight on from there and it really works well too. So um, after we do the dynamics poem, when they come back the next time, we'll probably run through it one more time because they really, really love it and it's really, really great practice for them um, with dynamics. And then I'll do one of a couple other different dynamic activities. Um, first, I might turn on Forte Piano and have them conduct. So they're going to conduct big for forte and small for piano. And then we'll talk about how many beats in the measure and um, make relationships like that when we're teaching conducting. Another activity that I really like to do with dynamics is flashlight painting. And I first heard the, the term flashlight painting from the incredible Artie Almeida. And I really, again, I'm looking for more ways to make dynamics something real that we can practice and um, that we can kind of focus on a little bit more than just, oh, here it is in a song, what does it mean? So um, I have flash flashlights for all the kids. I got a great deal at them. Um, the LED ones, so you don't have to keep pumping batteries into them like every three or four classes. And um, we stand around the room. My room just happens to be a rectangle, but this would work in other shapes as well. And I would tell the students that this is kind of like um, our own little speaker. We're, we're going to kind of map out on the ceiling where the loudest parts of the song would be and where the smallest parts will be. And so we start by finding the very center of the room with our flashlights. And that is going to be the quietest place. Well, what symbols do we have for quiet? Oh, P and PP and MP, and then always giggling PP, ha 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 ha. And um, then I said, okay, great. So not exactly the opposite, but if we were going to get louder from the center of the room, where would we be? And so they would, you know, slowly pull back so that we have more space for the loud part. And then finally, where the ceiling meets the wall, that's going to be our loudest point in the song. And um, sometimes I, I have to go and explain that um, soft and loud or quiet and loud, if you prefer, um, are all relative. Um, like medium loud is my regular tone of voice, which they think is hilarious because I'm obviously like a fortissima, right? <laughs> and then I'll pick on a, another student and say, but you know, um, Mandy may be um, MP, mezzo piano might be her natural tone of voice. So loud to her could be um, mezzo forte um, and fortissimo would just be something she would never go to. So we kind of, you know, scope out on the ceiling that soft is in the middle and loud is at the edges. And then we'll just kind of um, use the flashlights to kind of wobble the beat on the ceiling. And um, on the soft parts, we're in the center. And on the loud parts, we're on the edges. And the first thing we almost always do with that is forte piano because it is so obvious where the loud and soft parts are. And if that goes well, then we move on to Radetzky March by, um, oh my gosh, why can I never remember this when there's a camera looking at me? Who's it by? Radetzky March. Um, I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. And we'll use that and we'll actually like, we're Strauss. It's my, I'm sorry. Sorry. Didn't mean to yell at you. Strauss. Um, we'll march around the room and, you know, we'll be um, uh, stepping the beat on loud. And then when it gets softer, we'll be on the inside. And there's a lot of contrast in that piece. So they get to go back and forth quite a bit. And it also gives us an opportunity to say, is this really the loudest we've heard or really the softest we've heard? Then, you know, where should we be right now? Kind of flashing the beat right there. So that's a super, super awesome activity. This, of course, is a whole group activity because it's not easy to have the lights off and do stations. So, so this one doesn't really translate in that way. Um, and so those activities, after we had done that, then, um, as I said before, every fourth or fifth class period or so, I plan workstations unless we're prepping for a concert. And so at the next round of workstations, then I would plan some dynamic 
uh, workstations to kind of reinforce what we've done and kind of put that wordage in their mouth and make sure that um, it's not just, you know, three months later, I'm like, oh, look, that says Forte. What does it mean? But it's something that I'm using to keep it fresh there. Um, and so one of the things that I do with that, especially in October, since I kind of do all of these throughout this time, are um, candy corn puzzles. And candy corn puzzles take the three different... I don't think these are all right. I don't even know if I'm going to put a right one together here. The three different pieces of candy corn. Find another one. Yes, I know those don't match, but imagine that they do. And um, they piece them together. And so that you can see the symbol, you can see the Italian term, and then you can see the definition in English. And then after they've put all of the puzzles together, they use, and let me show you one. I was making extra copies to do... Um, small groups. So I have some that I haven't cut apart. <coughs> Excuse me. And so once they get them all together, it looks like this. And they go back and then they write that information on this sheet. So they'll look and they'll say, okay, what was the symbol? The symbol was P. What was its Italian term? That was piano. And what was the definition? That was soft or quiet, whichever way you would say that in your classroom. And so then they write down all of that. And that's their workstation. And that takes a group of four, about six or seven minutes to do because they all put the puzzles together. And then they just record the information that they've discovered by putting the puzzles together. And they really like this activity for being such a simple um, activity, they really enjoy it. So I have others like note values and I have a recorder one as well. And they just, of course, there's the number of counts and the name and the note there. And all of those are linked in the notes up above. So if you found some candy corn like foam pieces or something at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or someplace like that, those would be really quick and easy to make. You could just write the symbols and the definitions and the words like that and the kids really enjoy it. Another station that I might do with Dynamics after um, our Dynamics lesson and the Spooky Dynamics poem is by my hero, um, Artie Almeida. It's called Doggone Dynamics. And um, I don't always do this as a whole group activity before I put it in a workstation, but often a lot of these activities I do. And what you do with this activity is um, you place it so that Fido is facing you. And then um, either one student can call it out or I can have, you know, just draw a card that says very loud and then they would see if they were right. So if I were saying choose the um, term or choose the word and the symbol that stand for medium loud. Well, then they would take their pencil and put through this little hole. And then on the back of the sheet, it says medium loud. So they would be able to check themselves to see if they got the answer right. And um, this usually takes four or five minutes to do like all of them that are there. And I'll model what I expect for them to do at the workstation before we get started. And this is available at um, all awesome music stores. Probably West carries it. I think my link is to um, Plank Road Publishing. That's where um, Music K8 Magazine is hosted. And it's a great addition and it just focuses on dynamics. Um, sometimes I'll set this near the dynamics that I have up on the cabinet or the wall. And it is amazing how many students don't notice that the answers are right there around them. But it's still good practice for them to say the words and to find um, the definition there as well. So those are a few things that I do with dynamics that are fall specific. I thought though before we finished I would share some of my other favorite fall workstations. Um, one of them comes in this. Oh, that's her unicorn from the hospital. Its name is Uni. Seems good, right? I tried to get her to come up with um, a musical name. No. And then I always want her to name her animals Tracy. No. No there. Although I did get my nephews and niece, or maybe it was my brother that did this. They named a chicken after me. The chicken's name was Tracy. Later I found out that it was the loudest, bossiest chicken. <laughs> but <laughs> whatever. I had a chicken named after me. Tracy has since gone to be with a colonel or, you know, 
a big chicken coop in the sky. So this plastic pumpkin container used to contain a bunch of candy. They had these at Walmart for like the last two or three years I've seen them. I haven't started hunting for Halloween candy, um, so I don't really know if they have them this year or not. But you could also, if you find them, take a picture, maybe put out um, a blurb on social media or blurb to your parents saying, hey, I would really love to have these for some activities in my classroom. And they're fabulous. I think they were like $20 because they came with like a butt ton of candy in them. Um, and so I was able to snag a couple here and there. It would also, this is really just um, festivity. You don't have to have this pumpkin to do any of this other stuff. But, you know, it's festive and fun. And so take the lid off. And inside are all of these pieces for... Um, pumpkin matching and these are just little foam pieces they are actually really really thin I picked these up um, a ton of these up at Dollar Tree many years ago the back of them has a jack-o-lantern face and I haven't used these as much in recent years because I've had several students that were not able to celebrate holidays. And if I just did a plain pumpkin, then um, we would be able to use this activity in class. But if it had a jack-o'-lantern, um, you know, representing an, uh, something to do with Halloween, then they wouldn't be able to do it. So I haven't used these specific ones, but these are probably in Dollar Tree or someplace like that right now. So on the back of them, I just wrote rhythms and I wrote them in sets of two. Again, I'm not going to match them up for you, but um, this thin students would lay down the pumpkins and it would just be memory. So they'd turn one over and clap the rhythm and then they would turn another one over and clap the rhythm. If they were the same, they got to collect them and the person with the most matches at the end of either their workstation time or the end of the round would um, be the winner. And the winner got, you know, nothing but bragging rights because, you know, workstations. Um, and if they got it wrong, they just flipped them over and then the next person had a turn. And so this, for um, second and third grade, I think I would do about six pairs. And for older grades, I would do 10 or 12 pairs. And this set, you can tell, was um, probably more for like second grade that was um, working on these patterns. And um, my fourth and fifth graders would have had 16th notes and some uh, syncopation and other other things um, written on the back of theirs. Now, what's cool about this pumpkin memory idea is that there are so many stores that have these little foam pieces for every season. Um, I've seen little snowflakes and little Christmas trees, um, Santa hats, turkeys that you could write on, um, tons and tons of season seasonal foamy things that you could buy. Now, yes, if you want to buy some and cut your own pieces out, you just knock yourself out. I don't have time to do that, and I would rather pay a buck to have all of them already cut out than, than not. But this is a quick and easy game to play, and um, these are pretty easy to clean to the to wipe off and I just used a sharpie on those and putting them in the big pumpkin is just kind of a hook of like ooh they've got the pumpkin center oh, wow another station um that I like to do with this um during this time of year is like the freeze dance or the movement station and sometimes we do this with music and sometimes we do this without music in my store i have a bunch of freeze dance and creative movement sets and i have a thanksgiving one that's really cool because it's got like the pilgrim prance and the salt shaker and um and there's also one for halloween and um i'll just put these in a corner and the kids if there's not music then the kids just practice doing these dance moves or they like lay the cards out like three or four in a row and then like do the movements in order kind of choreographing a little dance sometimes I will put like um an iPod or something back there with just um music for fall or you know some funky kids bop stuff or that they can choreograph with the seasonal cards that are back there and that's a super super fun station but I found because all my stations get noisier and noisier as the years go by that um um, they'll do it without music too and it's just as fun to explore um, different levels and different paths and stuff so that's a fun activity 
The next one is um, one of the Clip It games, and I think I've talked about these before. Um, these really just take um, clothespins, and then you're in. Now, I don't have just a Halloween-specific set um, because I have a lot of other things going on in October, but what I found is that I can use the camping set, and that's the one that I have here. These are just in a, I guess this is maybe 5 by 7 photo box, and... Um, so it is camping themed. We have a lot of campers in my area and this is a fun time to camp as it's getting just a little cooler and it's spooky story time around the, the campfires. And these cards will have the name, like this says Tackle Box. And then they um, go through the rhythms. Does Tackle Box sound like T T Ta or Ta or T T? And then they use the clothespin and they pin their answer. And then they can check with an answer sheet that often I include in the center or I'll say, you know, if you finish early, swap piles with another person in your group and check their answers and keep doing that until it's time to rotate. Because in one set, there's a pretty um, big number of those, but it's quick and it's easy. And even though the um, rhythm patterns on some of these are pretty simple, my fifth graders really still enjoy doing this and still enjoy clipping them. And um, so I try to include those. I have Thanksgiving one. That one's a really popular one. And then there are several sets. Again, I put a links um, in the link that's up above. Um, um, several that could work any time of the year. So if it was November and you were talking about maybe Veterans Day, there's like an American President's um, clip it. That would be fun to do. So there are different sets that work during different times of the year, and it's kind of nice to mix up the stations that you're doing. There are also um, pitch matching cards that are fall themed, and they're linked up there as well. Another game, now this one I do, this is like the Artie Almeida show. It really, really is. Someone should be tagging her so that, that she knows. Oh, I'm just talking about how amazing she is tonight. One of the games that I learned, or at least was reminded of by Artie, is called There's a Spider on the Floor. And it goes, there's a spider on the floor, on the floor. There's a spider on the floor, on the floor. There's a spider on the floor. I can't take it anymore. There's a spider on the floor, on the floor. And then you move all over the body. There's a spider on the head. There's a spider on my knee. And each has an accompanying rhyme. Um, there's a link in the resources to a blog post that has um, the lyrics printed out that, that I use. So depending on the age group for the workstation, if it's younger kids, I may just put a copy of the lyrics and then a handful of plastic spiders or rubber spiders or or um, whatever I would have at that time. And I've even made like little paper ones and laminated ones, but uh, they get in some weird places. So I prefer the other ones. Um, and so I'll put this in the kids at the station. It becomes a singing station. And our, uh, <laughs> I'm glad you tagged her. Um, so I will just throw that in there and that's singing. So they know when they get there to sing this song and if they have time left over it, they can make up their own silly verses about the spiders. If I'm dealing with an older class, because even my fourth graders will ask for, there's a spider on the floor again, because they, they love that song. Um, they, they have a harder job though. So they might still get the handful of spiders, but then everyone in their group has to come up with a new verse and write it down and then turn it into me after they've moved to station. So it could be, um, there's a spider on the bus, on the bus. There's a spider on the bus, on the bus. There's a spider on the bus and he makes me want to cuss. There's a spider on the bus, on the bus. Or wherever it is that they want to make a, a quick verse up about. And I love, 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 love giving them an opportunity to do that. And it's so fun. And they do this with um just just no reservation. You know, it's not like they're having to get up and sing in front of everyone. And they're just so turned on by how silly and how fun it is. So just a quick lyric sheet and a handful of plastic spiders. I've used spider rings before, like the little fake ones that you get from the um, quarter machines or the kinds that are all over the place at Halloween. But I've recently invested in some sturdier spiders so that not only can they crawl all over our bodies, um, but they can also, if you like flick them the right way, they kind of jump, which is, you know, scary and horrifying and 
and delightful. So that would be an easy station to do too. Of course, you would probably want to teach this song before you would put that in the workstation so that they knew what they were doing. Um, and one more. Um, <laughs> this is a little gruesome, but I don't know. It works for me. I have a big box of Mr. Potato Heads, probably in Mrs. Potato Heads. I don't know. It's a very gender neutral box. And a whole bunch of pieces, just all sorts of them, that I found at yard sales, that my mom picked up, that just wherever. And in the lower grades, like K and 1, we would do, um, I would pass out potato parts <laughs> and I would sing who has an arm and the kids that had the arms would sing back I have an arm and they would bring their arm up and they would put it wherever they wanted or wherever it would fit on Mr. Potato Head and so we would um, go through all the different parts sometimes we would build three or four different potato heads but a great way for them to sing and for them to either solo sing or maybe just sing a duet and that gives me an opportunity to hear um, if they're matching pitch or if there's you know enough breath support or anything that we may be working on at that time. With the older kids, I can put this in a station. And as I'm introducing the station, I'm like, hey, it's Halloween time. And you know what's creepy? Dismembered people. And I'm like, but we don't do that stuff. That's a school and it's crazy and it's messy. And we are not getting blood all over Mrs. King's new carpet. So instead, what if we dismember Mr. Potato Head? Whoa! And they're like, oh my gosh, that's so fun. I don't know. I don't know why they buy into it. Maybe it's the intro. Maybe it really is just that fun. But, you know, we kind of creep it out just a little bit by saying, oh my gosh, I've got a box full of body parts here. <laughs> and the only way you can get it back on the potato is to sing the part you have. I have an arm. I have a nose. I have a hat. Or whatever that is to put them all together. And I don't know why this works. It's like magic. But my fourth and fifth graders, well, they would, they love this activity. So I haven't done it with a full rotation. I've just done it with those, a couple of odds and ends classes, like two classes before a holiday or something like that. But um, I think that I'm going to include that this season in rotations because it is just so stinking fun. And they're singing with with no reservation. They're just putting it all out there. And I want them to feel comfortable singing. I want them to feel comfortable singing with others. So this is kind of a, a sneaky little way to um, get that in there. All right, let me check my notes and make sure we've talked about all of the fall stations that I wanted to get to. I think we did. If you um, have questions, first check out, check out that link that's up there it's for the resources. There are a couple of blog post links. There's some other ideas that I didn't talk about tonight for workstations. And because we're doing this still in September, it would still give you plenty of time if you had to like, I don't know, go scavenge potato head parts or, <laughs> or whatever it is that you had to get together for those workstations. And if your answers aren't found in those links, then you can of course question put your questions or your comments or maybe you have a resource that complements something that I just talked about then please make sure that you add it to this post that so that others can share with that too you can also message me here on Facebook or um, Instagram I'm not as quick to respond on Twitter so if you need a faster message those would be the best ways to get a hold of me and I will be um, happy to answer or at least to confuse you further um, any questions that you would have on what we talked about tonight so thanks so much for joining me I can't wait